Hi, my name is Maria and welcome to my kitchen. Today I want to show you how to make a Native American dish called Three Sisters. And today I'm going to show you how to make Three Sisters stew. And there are different recipes um, throughout all the different tribal nations for Three Sisters. There's stews, there's soups, they're just regular dishes. And, but the idea is pretty much the same. It's really healthy and very delicious. So we have some really great um, ingredients in this um, recipe. So the three sisters, and I wanted to show you this little picture here. The three sisters is a legend where they are corn, beans, and squash. They are seen as the three beautiful sisters because they grow in the same mound in the garden. And the corn provides a ladder for the bean vine and they together give shade to the squash. And so the recipe that I've got today um, comes from a website of the Cherokee Nation. And so this is, um, we have our, our corn, and we have our beans, and we have our squash. And we have like lots of choices, different, um, I was noticing there's like so many different recipes of different types of, of beans, different types of squash. So today I'm gonna to make it kind of an easy recipe. So I have my, my pan here and I am gonna put some olive oil in here. I'm just putting it out in there because I'm gonna fry up some onions and garlic into here and get that going. Today, the squash I'm going to use is butternut squash, and I bought it already chopped up and frozen, and you can use some frozen corn, which is what I've got as well. And then I'm going to put some Pueblo chilies in there, because, you know, it's Pueblo, you have to have your Pueblo chilies, and um, they always make everything that you put them in taste great. And so I'm going to go ahead and put the onions first. I might have had it too high. And so, if it gets too high, you can also always take it off the burner so it can cool off a little. So we've got our, our onions cooking. And the reason why I put the onions in first is because the garlic tends to burn really quickly and so you want your onions to be ready before you put your garlic in because you don't want to burn your garlic that doesn't taste good and so now i'm going to go ahead and put my onions back in here on the stove they're going pretty good and i'm going to put some chopped garlic that i have here And I have some chopped cilantro as well, and that's what I'm gonna put at the end. Once you serve it, you're gonna to wanna to put some cilantro on top if you want. And if you, this is more of a vegan dish, but if you wanted to put um, beef in here or chicken, you know, pork, whatever you want, you can definitely do that and make it a, a heartier stew. But um, a lot of the recipes were vegan is what I've noticed, and so I thought I might as well go that route with this one. And so now I am going to go ahead and put some water in here. Uh, actually, no. I'm going to put the bubble chilies in. I want to toast them a little bit, get them warmed up. They've been sitting in the fridge and get them, have them give like the onions and the garlic a little bit of their flavor to it before I put the water in. And because it's a stew, you don't want to use too much water, so I'm just going to use two cups of water to just kind of boil everything up. And if you wanted to use, instead of water, if you wanted to use like um, a chicken broth or a beef broth, vegetable broth, you know, I'm sure it'll make it taste really great. I'm going to pour, put in some salt and pepper. 
just on top of the onion mixture. That way we have a little bit of that going on. And now I'm going to go ahead and put the water in. And you can always make more if you want. You want to add the water, add some more water. You definitely can make it more of a soup. But I'm making a stew, so I want it to be a little hearty. And I'm going to go ahead and I am putting 10 ounces of butternut squash. That's my favorite squash. And I'm going to put about a little over a cup of frozen corn. I'm going to just raise the temperature a little bit and we're going to cook this. So there we have the corn and the squash. And I want them to cook a little bit uh, because they were frozen. I want them to cook a little bit before I put in the beans. And then also, I'm going to add some tomatoes. These were canned tomatoes that were chopped up. I just had them left over from another recipe, so I thought I would just throw that in. So you don't have to have tomatoes in your stew, but um, a lot of recipes did call for tomatoes. So that was about a, a little more, more than a cup of tomatoes. And so that's cooking. Show you that I had the corn and the butternut squash out for a little bit, so they're actually not that frozen. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in our can. Now, if you didn't, if you wanted to do it a little bit nicer and not, I did kind of like the easy way where I'm just using canned and frozen items and putting them in here. But let's say you have the time and you want to roast a squash, or you can, um, that's actually why I bought the acorn squash, because that was my plan, where you just basically cut your squash in half and then you pull the seeds out and then you put them in the roasting pan in the oven for about an hour or so, depending on the size of the squash. Then once you have that, it's good, your house is gonna smell amazing. The squash tastes so wonderful that you're going to, you're just probably just wanna eat it like that, but you're gonna to wanna to let it cool off a little bit, peel it and chop it up into um, chunks for your stew. And so I'm going to show you, mine isn't fully cooked, but I want you to see what it looks like. And so this is what it's going to look like. And you're gonna wanna cook it, you know, I'm, I, as you can see, it's only been a few minutes, but you're gonna wanna have this on the stove I would say give it like an hour to a couple of hours even though um, I used like the easy way with the frozen veggies and the canned beans I would still let it sit there for at least an hour just so that it can absorb all the flavors and you know um, and cook through so of course if you have meat in there you're gonna want it to cook it a lot longer but this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can, you can see that. Now I am going to cook this longer and I'm going to throw these, this little corn in there. I kind of thought it would look pretty so that's why I cut it up that way. So here you can see we've got the butternut squash, we've got the corn, and we have our beans in there. So, you know, this is a really healthy dish, and, um, and I'm just going to put a little bit of cilantro on top just to make it look pretty. Um, all of these flavors work really well together, very healthy. Um, if you go on to different websites, you'll see like the Iroko Nation, um, they have a different version of what they do 
but pretty much everything is um, the three sisters with the corn, the squash, and the beans. And then you can, it's so versatile, you can just add whatever you wanted to it. Whatever you have left over in your kitchen, if you wanted to put bell peppers, if you want to put ground beef, um, whatever you had, you can, you can add to this. Um, one of my favorite beans that I was going to use were the Anasazi beans, but I switched to the pinto beans today just to kind of make it a little easier because um, that's what I had. And that's kind of what makes this a perfect dish for fall because whatever you have in your kitchen, um, you just throw it into with these three ingredients and you've got a healthy, um, really tasty dish. So I hope you enjoy. Try your three sisters dish whether it's a soup, stew, or just a regular dish with maybe some rice or quinoa. Um, it's just, you know, it's just really perfect for, for fall. So thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.